Can't see her. That's because she's not there. But I made you look, didn't I? <laughs> you shouldn't say things that aren't true. I know that, Mr. Hooter, but this isn't like telling fibs. This is just a game. It's called Made You Look. Oh, hello, magician. <laughs> made you look again. You didn't make <laughs> me look. You might be able to fool Snodgrass. But you can't fool me. Perhaps not. But I should think he could. Who? Ork. You caught me out. Yes, made you look, didn't I? <laughs> look. Two red ears. Ah, you can't catch me out as easily as that. <laughs> We're not fooling Toby. There really are two red ears. It's the Gruffle. He's right behind you. Look! I won't look. You can't make a fool of me. But he really is there. Oh, very good, Snodgrass. You look so scared I could almost believe the Gruffle is there. <laughs> but he is! Didn't you hear him roar? That was Snodgrass. Very clever of him, too. He managed to roar without moving his... mouth. Oh. Run, everybody! <laughs> Oh. Ah! Oh. Oh. You look very scared. Oh, magician, Auntie Flo, the Gruffle's here. He's climbing into the garden. The other said I saw his ears and I thought it was all part of the game. But there he was, and he roared and looked ever so fierce. Just a minute. <laughs> Calm down, Toby. There's no need to be scared. Where exactly did you say the gruffle is? Over there in my garden. Good. We'll take this coal across to him. <laughs> what for? Well, for him to eat, of course. I thought everybody knew that the gruffle eats coal. Well, I often leave some in the garden for him. I expect that's why he comes here. I wish he wouldn't. I'm scared of him. Me too. He's such a bad-tempered monster. Oh, yes, but you know, sometimes I feel quite sorry for him. Yes, yeah, so do I. I don't think he can really help being bad-tempered. It was just the way Gruffles are. But he frightens people. Well, yes, he does, but he often comes off worst, you know. I can remember when he tried to take some fish away from the cats that live in our garden. <laughs> Is that the story we began last time? Hmm. Tim and Tesser had just learned how to fish. That's right. Well, on the way home, they met the Gruffle. Oh, what happened? Well, let's go across to the bird bath, shall we? Coming, Mr. Hooter? No, I think I'll stay here. I've had too much excitement for one day. Yeah. What's the matter, Toby? Don't you want to look into the bird bath? Oh, yes, but I'm, I'm looking out for the gruffle. I hope he doesn't come over here. Oh, don't worry about him, Toby. He won't harm you. Oh. Pegs and Tim and Tessa all went fishing in a stream. They caught three fish. Tessa and Tim ate a little fish each, and then Pegs decided that it was time to go home. She picked up a third fish and took it home for supper. They just got to the lake when there was a loud roar, and they saw a large red monster. It was the Gruffle. Give me that fish, roared the Gruffle. I'm hungry. Tim and Tessa were very frightened. But Pegs wasn't frightened. She put down the fish. This is our supper, not yours, she said. The monster was furious. He roared again. Fire and smoke shot out of his mouth. But at that moment, the wind blew the monster's beard sideways. The beard caught a light. It was all on fire. The monster leapt into the lake and put his beard under the water. Quick! cried Pegs. She picked up the fish 
and the three cats ran back to their home in the hole under the steps. They had just finished supper when they heard someone snuffling outside. They looked out of the hole. A gruffle was in the garden, getting dry by a fire. He looked very miserable. Look, said Tessa. He's lost his beard. It was burnt off. Serve him right, said Tim. He shouldn't blow fire at cats. He'll know better another time. I suppose it did serve him right in a way, but I can't help feeling a little sorry for the gruffle, all wet and miserable with his beard burnt off. Mm. And no friends to help him cheer up. No friends? Oh, that's right, Snodgrass. The gruffle's so gruff and grumpy, I don't think he's got a friend in the whole wide world. Yes, and you can imagine what that's like, can't you? Music. If I didn't have a friend like you, I really don't know what I'd do. I need someone I can talk with, sing and play and walk with, someone like a friend like you. I'm so glad I've got a friend like you and you and you, someone I can tell my troubles to. I need someone I can share with, laugh and show I care with, someone like a friend, like you and you and you. I'm so glad that I've got friends like you. Oh, lovely, Terry. Well, I think we're very lucky to have so many good friends, not like the Gruffle. Still, at least he's got the magician to put coal down for him. That's a friendly thing to do. Yes, I suppose it is. And I'd better put some down for him now. Uh, where did you say he was, Toby? Over in your little garden? Uh, yes, but aren't you going to look through the story with me first? Oh, well, I'll oh. do that if the magician will magic down the storybook for me. Oh, would you? I'd very well. Yes, of course. Oh. Oh. Here you are, Auntie Flo. Thank you very much, magician. And I'll see you all later. Right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now, who's coming to check the story with me? Oh, I am. And me. I need to keep practising if I want to be a good reader. Well, come on, then. Come on, hurry up, Snodgrass. Woo! You got in my way. <laughs> Here we are, then. Pencils and paper, pens and ink. The words shall appear before you can blink. Right. Now, the cats had been fishing, and they were taking a fish home for their supper. When... The gruffle stopped them. Yes, that's right. And the gruffle wanted them to give him the fish, but pegs wouldn't. And the Gruffle was so angry, something shot out of his mouth. Uh, his teeth? No, silly. Look, oh, Snodgrass, see if you can read what it says. Fire and smoke. Well done. And then suddenly the wind blew and something happened. Yes, his beard caught a light. That's right. His beard was on... Well, see if you can read it, Snodgrass. You've read it once before. Look here. Fire. Well done. The monster's beard was on fire. Good. Poor old Gruffle. He could have been badly burnt. Yes, but he managed to do something about it. How? By jumping into the lake. That's right. That put the fire out, but it made him very wet. Hmm? And he'd lost his beard. <laughs> yes, which is why the title of the story is... Can I read it? Yes. There you are. The... Monster loses his beard. Well done. Right. There. Wow. Oh, thank you, Toby. <laughs> he shouldn't have breathed fire at the cats, should he? He could have hurt them. No wonder he doesn't have any friends. Mm. I don't think I'd like to be his friend. He's much too bad-tempered, and he scares me. Still, perhaps we ought to be a bit kinder to him. How? Well, we could do something for him. I know. We could make a gruffle table for him. A gruffle table? What's one of those? Well, if we're putting food out for the birds, we put it on a bird table, don't we? Yes. Well, why shouldn't we have a gruffle table? We could put coal on it, and the gruffle would know it was meant for him. <laughs> I see what you mean. Well, it would certainly make the gruffle feel more welcome in the garden. <gasps> then let's cast a spell to make one. Come on! 
<coughs> Hello, everybody. Be careful where you play today, won't you? The gruffles in the garden, you know. <laughs> we know, Beryl. We're going to make a gruffle table for him. A gruffle table? Oh, yes. It's like a bird table, Beryl. Only a bird table's meant for birds, and the gruffle table's meant for the gruffle. I see. Well, if it's meant for the gruffle, you'll need a colour beginning with gu. 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 Green? Or grey? Oh, I know. I've got a grey glove. Look. Gu for grey, gu for glove, and gu for gruffle. There, thank you. Now, since it's a table you want, you'll have to add something beginning with gu. Hmm. What about a tulip? Oh, yes. I'm very fond of tulips. Here you are, then. Barrel. Yeah. Now we'll need the magic chew, won't we? And I'm sure we all remember how that goes. Mm. Bomb. Right. Bomb. 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 Oh, now the magic cap. And I'll do the magic rhyme. Dragon wagon, wagon dragon, in my garden if you're able. Wagon dragon, dragon wagon, make for us a gruffle table. There, now, let's go and see what it looks like, eh? Yes, but be careful, the gruffle might still be there. Oh yes, be careful. <laughs> Gosh, I never thought it would look as smart as that. I thought it would be just an ordinary wooden table. So did I. That must have been a really good spell. It's all laid out properly too. Look, knife on the right, fork on the left. Do you use a knife and fork for eating coal? Ah, don't really know. Never eaten coal. Neither but... have I. Oh, and look, hmm? there's even a little vase oh. on the table to put a flower in. Oh, let's uh, pick one, shall we? Yes. Uh, a nice red one, the same colour as the gruffle. Good idea. Here we are. Look. Nice red rose. Yeah. Hey, now doesn't that look lovely? Yes, it does. Now there's only one thing missing. What's that? There's nothing for the gruffle to eat. No, you're right. Now where did the magician put that coal? Oh, it's here, look. Be careful, Auntie Flo. We don't want to get the tablecloth dirty. No, no, we don't want to spoil it. There. Now I'm sure the gruffle would be delighted with that. It really does look nice. Mm. I hope he likes it. Oh, I'll soon find out. Here he comes now. Oh. I'm scared of him. Let's hide. Yes. Gone. Come on. Well, he seems to have enjoyed the coal. Huh. And the plate, and the glass, and the knife, and the fork, and our gruffle table. Look, he's even eaten some of that as well. Yes, and the rest of it's all flattened where he's been standing on it. It's not fair. Our beautiful table. Just wait until I see the gruffle. I'll give him a good telling off about this. You can do it now. He's right behind you. Where? Oh. <laughs> Made you look. <laughs> a punch, <laughs> not grass. <laughs> Thank you.